What's going on guys? Welcome to Homecraft Cocktails. Cocktails you can make for the come of your home. My name is Bruce, and first and foremost, I just wanna say that uh, this past week, we finally hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, as well as eclipsed over a thousand views on one of my videos, uh, more specifically the Lemon Drop video. So I just wanna say major, major, major thank you to everyone who's just who's just shown my, my channel so much love and support since I started this back in January of this year. Um, obviously, it's not the most explosive, you know, fastest growth in the world, but it is uh, steady, organic growth. And I'm just very, very thankful and grateful for the love that you guys have shown me on this along this journey. And hopefully, you know, we can go even bigger and further into it. So just thank you all for that. For this week's episode, um, I'm actually going to Punta Cana in about 48 hours. So I'm actually going to be doing one of, if not the last tropical cocktail I'll be presenting to you in 2022. This week's cocktail will be the Scorpion. So the Scorpion dates back to around the 1930s with our good old friend Trader Vic, who is a renowned tiki bartender. While visiting Honolulu, Hawaii, Trader Vic was at a bar called The Hut, and that's where he first encountered the drink in its first variation. The bartenders there used a Kale Hau, which is a Hawaiian moonshine made from a fermented tea plant. They used that as, as the main primary spirit, along with several other various juices. And Trader Vic would immediately fall in love with the cocktail because they served it in a, a large communal bowl. With this newly gained inspiration, he would travel back to Oakland, California, where his original Trader Vic's location was, and he made his own riff of the cocktail where he used rum instead of the more rare Akali Hau. The original recipe was said to have had 15 different ingredients and was served in a large communal tiki bowl. In his 1946 book of food and drink, Trevor Vic made the recipe to serve up to 12 people. Among the ingredients were a bottle and a half of rum, brandy, gin, and about a half a bottle of white wine to top it all off. Other versions of the drink would appear in his 1972 Trader Vic's Bartender's Guide, which not only gave a new updated recipe, but also gave a more uh, individual cocktail recipe that we now know and love today. So yes, if you wanna be technical, Trader Vic did not really invent the Scorpion because he basically got it from the bartenders in Honolulu. However, he is the key factor for why the cocktail became so prominent and really is the reason why it has lasted for the last nine to 10 decades. And now with that brief history lesson out of the way, let's get down to actually making the drink. So I've made the Scorpion a few times prior to this, uh, but each time I've used the shaken method instead of the, I guess, more traditional blending method. So today I'll be actually blending the cocktail. So first things first, I wanna start off by pouring two ounces of white rum into our blender. Next, we'll pour an ounce of brandy. We'll then follow that up with half of an ounce of orgeau or almond syrup. Uh, you might not be able to find this in your local grocery store or uh, liquor store as it is a more uncommon un ingredient, but you can get a bottle of this off of Amazon for literally like $11. Then we're gonna do two ounces of orange juice. followed by an ounce and a half of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And then you wanna put about two to three scoops of ice into your blender and blend for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then you want to pour your newly blended concoction into your cocktail glass, and we'll be using a hurricane glass for this one. Finally, we're going to garnish with an orange slice, although I don't have any oranges, so I'll be using a lemon slice instead, an umbrella, and maraschino cherry. Then we're gonna place the straw in there. And there we have a scorpion. And 
And now that we have our drink, let's give it a taste. So like I said, this is my first time actually blending the cocktail instead of shaking it. And it, I mean, it really does make a difference. This is a, it almost has like a, an entirely different cocktail altogether. Wow, okay. Um, first off, yeah, I really, I already enjoyed the Scorpion uh, in the past few times that I've made it, you know, when I did, where I did it with the shaking method. I do think I like the blending method even more. I, I don't know what it is. I think just something about that consistency um, really just hits home for me. I feel like it kind of gives it more body, if that makes sense. And then the taste, the taste also is different as well. I mean, obviously with the different ways you can incorporate ice into your cocktail, it does make a huge difference, you know, whether you um, shake it, stir it, blend it, and then, you know, even with those individually, you can also break those down even further into like cracked ice, cubed ice, um, large cubed ice, you know, it, it, it's so many different ways, so it does make a difference. And I think this is a prime example of that, because like I said, this tastes entirely different to me than, I won't say entirely, entirely different. Um, obviously, it's similar to a shaken scorpion, but it's a large enough difference for it to be uh, noticeable to me. I will say the scorpion is one of the more easier, um, more simple tiki cocktails you can make. Usually tiki cocktails have a plethora of ingredients, you know, nine, 10, sometimes even 11 or 12 ingredients in the, in the cocktail. So for this to only have like, what, five or so, um, you know, it's definitely on the simpler end of the spectrum for tiki cocktails as far as they go. But that is not to say it is lacking in flavor whatsoever. This is a very tasty cocktail. It's very balanced. It's not sweet at all. It's not overly sweet at least um, whatsoever. Also, as far as the drink uh, aesthetically, I always like using hurricane glasses. I think it just, um, it makes any large, you know, tiki cocktail just look great. Also with the maraschino cherry, like you can see it kind of like just, just bleeding into the drink. It's actually uh, Halloween, the day of this recording. So, you know, that's pretty interesting there. But yes, I certainly recommend this drink to a, um, a large audience. It is not, you know, daunting at all. It, it's, it's not one that will steer away newer drinkers, but you can drink this. You could be, you could have just started drinking yesterday and I will recommend this cocktail to you. I think you'll like it. I, I, I don't see many people not liking this cocktail. Also, it, I wouldn't mind, you know, drinking this with eight, nine, ten of my friends in a large scorpion cocktail bowl. Is that the best way to consume a drink post-COVID? Probably not. However, it sounds fun and an enjoyable experience. So there's that. With that being said, guys, thank you for watching this week's episode, and I'll catch you next week for the next round. Peace.